My lungs screamed. Every ragged breath sent burning needles through my chest. Disorientation swirled in a world warped by the pressure, the icy water pressing in on me like a suffocating blanket. Above, the lights of the surface platform dwindled, their harsh industrial glow fading into the impenetrable blue blackness of the oceanic depths. Below, there was nothing. Darkness. Stillness. Only the maddening echo of my own laboured breath rattling in the comms bead I had jammed deep in my ear. Archer 4, status check! Captain Stonevoice cut in, his usual rough edge dulled by the distortion of the underwater comms. I clenched my jaw against the involuntary shiver that coursed through me. The nickname he'd given me was supposed to be a sign of affection, a throwback to some old military unit he'd served in. For me, it was a constant reminder that I was an outsider in this subaquatic world, a landlubber trying to play marine hunter. My fingers fumbled for the mic switch on my bulky bio suit. Negative on visual, Captain, I gritted out, forcing a calm I didn't feel. Moving into Zone 3 and... My words cut off as something massive brushed against me. Instinctively, I twisted around. My arm mounted floodlights slashing through the murky water. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was like whatever it was, big enough to knock me off course, had just vanished. I squeezed my eyes shut, willing away the familiar surge of nausea and the panicked memories of previous runs. It had been just a current... A rock formation, some stray piece of ocean debris, always an explanation. It should get easier after a dozen ops, but it didn't. With a forced exhale, I reoriented myself using the sonar beacon clipped to my belt. My target was within range, focus, do the job. Everything else was the abyss, whispering madness into your ear. Hold up, Archer, wait, Stone crackled again. Thermals showing three signatures down in your zone. Massive signatures. Unidentified. My fingers clenched against the harpoon gun. That's what had buffeted me. Not a current, not debris. Orders, Captain. I swallowed. The protocol was clear. One stray, observe and report. More than one, abort and engage. Hold position, Archer. Give me visual confirmation. Roger. There was no use arguing. We'd done this dance before. Stone needed hard proof before deploying hunters. But this was my territory, my problem. It had taken everything to claw my way into Stone Team. Two gruelling years of proving myself to these Aquacorp marines born with gills and webbed hands. I wasn't about to lose that over a few sensor glitches. The sonar blip intensified as I drew closer. The target wasn't just something big moving out there. It was a massive structure, nestled on the ocean floor. It looked... wrong. Smooth, organic curves rose in unnatural arcs, and what appeared to be apertures lined its massive flanks like eyes, and all of it glowed with a disconcerting, greenish luminescence that sent another shiver down my spine. Stone, I rasped, voice barely a whisper despite the comms bead. You seeing this? Silence crackled across the line. Repeat, Captain. Do you have... A burst of underwater static drowned out my voice. Terror shot through me. Com sabotage was one of their tricks, an old hunter's tale to spook recruits. My eyes darted about, the water suddenly heavy with an oppressive sense of presence. It felt like eyes were on me, not shark eyes, not predator eyes. Something colder, calculating. A primal scream pierced the water, an unearthly wail that seemed to echo from the structure itself. I whipped around just in time to see three colossal black shapes break from the abyss, their bioluminescence tracing out serpentine bodies three times the length of my biosuit. Eyes the size of dinner plates burned a neon blue, jagged hooked teeth lined jaws wider than a truck. These weren't sharks, not anything even remotely evolutionary. They were alien. Get out of there, Archer! Get out! Stone voice was a raw shout now. That scream must have echoed up the whole line, sending panic into those on the platform. But panic didn't help down here. Decision. It wasn't even a choice anymore. Survival demanded action. 
I launched a flare, more to blind the creatures than cause any serious damage. Muscle memory took over, charged the harpoon, aim, and... Then the world shattered in a burst of searing pain. Pain exploded through my shoulder, forcing a choked scream out of my helmet. One of the creatures had surged forth, its speed defying its monstrous size. I felt teeth sink into my biosuit, the reinforced exoskeleton buckling under the crushing pressure. Instinctively, I fired the harpoon blind, the recoil driving me backwards and ripping my shoulder with agonizing force. The monstrous shape lurched away, the metal spear lodged deep in its flesh. Bioluminescent blood trailed back like a gruesome comet tail in the murky black. Success was an ironic twist of the knife. I'd hit my mark, but now it was tethered to me as enraged, wounded behemoth circled. The other two lunged, the sonic shockwave knocking me backwards like a ragdoll. My comms bead blasted with static, and then stone panicked shouts, Extraction squad inbound! Archer, fall back! Fall back to... His words were cut off by a monstrous crash reverberating through the water. The surface platform. Something had slammed into it from below. Not just once, but in rapid, devastating blows that rippled down to my location with bone-jarring power. This wasn't hunting anymore. This was an attack. One thought pounded through my waterlogged brain. If anyone survived topside, I was on my own. But first, I had to survive here. In the depths. With them. Through the haze of shock and pain, I focused on the sonar beacon. My original target, the bioluminescent structure, dimmed and brightened with alarming irregularity. Those weren't predators. These creatures were intelligent, coordinated. This whole hunt had been a trap. But why? It sent a chill deeper than the icy water through me. I was an ant poking a hornet's nest, clueless to the scale of what might unfold. Movement. Another one charged, but I was ready. It slammed into an upturned boulder I'd scrambled behind. Camouflage was useless now. With a grunt, I jammed the harpoon gun into the soft tissue between two armoured scales. Blood and an ear-splitting screech exploded around me as the weapon overloaded. The force hurled the gun from my grasp, but the monster convulsed and thrashed away, its luminous blood now painting swirling clouds around me. It wouldn't last long. It was already drawing the attention of its wounded comrade, but it bought me time. Frantically, I fumbled for a cryo-grenade from my utility belt. My only chance was to break their focus. Aiming towards the structure, I yanked the pin and lobbed it with what strength I had left. The water warped with the blinding flash freeze. In the momentary disorientation, I shoved off the sea floor, aiming for the structure's largest aperture. If there was intelligent design to this place, a command centre perhaps, I could wreak havoc on the inside. But I'd hardly propelled myself a few yards when the crushing blackness that had filled my peripheral vision hit me head on. Another monstrous shape, hidden in the gloom. Impact stole my breath as sharp teeth sliced clean through the leg of my biosuit. Searing cold hit my bare skin as my helmet began to flood. Through the haze, I saw a glimpse of those neon eyes blazing at me. Then, everything faded into static riddled darkness. I had one chilling realisation. This wasn't even its hunting form. This was just how it toyed with prey. My lungs were on fire and the freezing, pressurising water felt like a vice crushing my body. Panic, sharp and suffocating, threatened to overtake me. My hand went for my comm bead. Useless, I remembered. Through spots dancing in my vision, I struggled to maintain a shred of consciousness. Every fibre of my being screamed to go limp, to give in. And in that final sliver of defiance, a plan sparked. Not an escape. There was no escape. A last-ditch act of desperate, foolish bravery or maybe utter stupidity. Either way, it was better than simply expiring down here. My numb fingers dug into my belt, desperately fumbling for a switch. The biosuit's life support had a secondary function, one reserved for the worst-case scenario, an oxygen purge. 
With a single gasp, my only gasp, I hit it. The suit hissed with the sudden expulsion of my precious air supply. In seconds, the bulky, life-saving gear transformed into a streamlined coffin. My vision swirled as the ocean rushed into my helmet. This was it. But it didn't hurt. In that moment, my body, tricked by the sudden shift, seemed to shut down. A defense mechanism I hadn't even known I had. The last thing I registered was the creature's startled recoil. Instead of attacking, it backed off, its neon eyes filled with confusion. My oxygen purge had bought me a fraction of a second. My body had gone still, like a dead thing. And perhaps, for a predator used to tracking life, even death had a different scent. Then the blackness consumed me, not the welcoming blackness of unconsciousness but oblivion, the kind where there is no you anymore. And then there was light, blinding, searing light. My vision swam back into focus, but it wasn't the murky depths I expected. I was splayed on a cold, metallic floor, gasping lungfuls of air that tasted clean and sterile. Voices boomed through speakers somewhere above. Pain stabbed through my shoulder and my waterlogged leg. It felt like every nerve was alight with agony, but I was alive. And out of the water! Coughing, I raised my head to take in my surroundings. I lay inside a stark, circular chamber lined with medical tubes and flashing monitors. Two Aquacore men hovered above me, bulky in their own biosuits, ripping away the useless remains of mine. Sir, he's responsive! One shouted into a comm unit on his wrist. It took me a moment to realize it was his voice I'd been hearing over the speakers. Then heavy footsteps. Captain Stone knelt beside me, the worry lines etched in his usually gruff face deepening. Archer. His voice boomed, surprisingly gentle. What the hell happened down there? Each word burned my raw throat, and my disoriented brain struggled to string them together. But my eyes found focus on his, unwavering. Not a hunt, I managed, voice a ragged croak. It was a damn massacre. The room fell into stunned silence. Stone exchanged a tense look with the other marines, then shifted his gaze back to me with a newfound seriousness. Start from the beginning, Archer, he ordered, his voice now devoid of its earlier warmth. Every detail, and make it damn well coherent this time. I gritted my teeth, fighting back a wave of nausea and the creeping disorientation of shock. This wasn't a debriefing. It was an interrogation. With effort, I shoved myself into a half-sitting position against the medical platform and spoke. My account spilled out in a hoarse, rapid torrent. The strange structure, the ambush, the creatures, the attack on the surface platform. Every detail burned against my eyelids like a painful afterimage. When I finally choked out the last words, describing my failed oxygen purge and the creature's hesitation, Captain Stone let out a low whistle. So, playing dead bought you what? Thirty seconds? A minute? He shook his head in a combination of grudging respect and disbelief. That's one for the training manuals, kid. And it also means someone or something decided to haul you to the surface instead of finishing the job. My stomach clenched. It hadn't even occurred to me. Those monstrous shadows in the murky depths weren't just driven by primal bloodlust. Bringing me up alive held a strategic importance I couldn't begin to understand. Knowledge, leverage, I couldn't even guess how their inhuman minds might work. One of the Aquacorp's medics leaned forward, syringe in hand. Sir, I need to stabilize him first. The shock... Wait, Stone interjected, his gaze sharp. He locked eyes with me again. The cryo grenade? Did you get near the structure? Could the creatures have retrieved it? The significance hit me like a weight dropped into my gut. They might have undetonated ordnance, an intact piece of advanced military hardware they clearly didn't understand. That... My voice faltered. I struggled to remember through the haze of fading panic. That, or there's more, more of those structures down there. Stone swore and turned to the comms unit. Full-scale alert. Get intel down to every sub-level. Sonar sweeps the works. I want thermal readouts across the Atlantic grid. Stat! He looked back at me, eyes narrowing. Archer, what you saw down there, 
that's just the beginning. And I hope to hell you have some survival instincts left because you're going back down as soon as you're able. I need a guide into their territory. My jaw tensed. Despite the pain, the exhaustion, and the terrifying unknown, a flare of stubborn defiance ignited within me. Whatever those abyssal things were planning, I wasn't going to sit sidelined like some helpless victim waiting to be picked off again. They wanted intel? Hell, I'd take this fight straight to their doorstep. Ready when you are, Captain, I said. My voice rasped, but there was a steel in it that even I hadn't heard before. This wasn't just my chance to survive anymore. It was about payback. They couldn't keep me under for long. The medics kept shooting me a mix of worried and annoyed glances, but they'd patched me up to their satisfaction. Shoulder dislocated, several nasty punctures on my leg, and of course, a near drowning to top it all off. All things considered, walking wounded in their book. It felt like minutes later when Stone stomped back into the med chamber, a hulking form in that ridiculous fishbowl helmet. In his hands was a redesigned biosuit, streamlined, lighter. My eyes were drawn to its side where a heavy-duty sonic rifle had been attached, practically dwarfing the harpoon I was used to. No way he meant for me to go back down there packing only that against creatures the size of school buses. Intel just confirmed an alarming number of similar anomalies in various sectors of the Atlantic, he grunted, shoving the suit my way. These things ain't localized, Archer. We're looking at a coordinated pushback against all ocean settlements. We need an ace in the hole, and that hole happens to be right where you were scooped up. We don't even know what the hell they are! I burst out. Stone knew as well as I did that this was about more than simple territorial dominance. These weren't sharks jockeying for the best feeding grounds. They showed strategy, technological savvy, even a terrifying willingness to play the long game. He merely stared at me, his voice an even rasp. Right now, that ignorance is what's killing my people. That structure you described, their command center, hive, breeding ground, whatever it is, that's our primary target. I'm throwing the full weight of the Aqua Corps at it, but that doesn't do jack all with the kind of threat we're up against. What does matter is what's inside your head, soldier. That's our intel. A cold shiver went down my spine. He wanted more than just a guide. They needed someone who'd been up close, looked directly at what humanity was now up against. It was a twisted kind of honor. Being picked not for skill, but for sheer proximity to near destruction. Maybe being an outsider had an advantage after all. They needed eyes unclouded by years of routine and undersea complacency. With shaking hands, I started strapping on the new suit. I could feel eyes. Stone, medics, and probably some intel goons lurking outside the tinted windows, assessing my every movement for signs of breakdown. They weren't worried about my body as much as my mind. The abyss could claim you even before you hit the water. I glanced up at Stone, finding a strange sort of understanding in his hard stare. So, I said, a shaky humour coating my voice, you ever hear stories about how some people who almost drown start craving the water afterwards, drawn back to the deep? Stone snorted, a bark of grim amusement. Heard em. Never believed em. Now. Now, maybe not so much. Me neither, I muttered. He had no idea just how true that was. While there was the primal terror, the near-death experience had shifted something within me. They dragged me out of those abyssal depths, pulled me into the sharp light of reality. But somewhere buried deep, a shadow remained. An unsettling fascination with the power and alien logic of that which hunted me. Fear, yes. But curiosity too. It made me the worst guide possible. And probably the only one they had. The descent back into the depths felt surreal. Stone was right about the weight of the aquacore behind me. The ocean churned with activity. Searchlights illuminated swaths of murky waters. Aquacorp teams were deploying on swift jet subs, and I could feel the rumble of larger submersibles lurking just below comms range. This was more than recon. It was a prelude to war. Still, 
As my descent pod slipped further, leaving the platform, crews and chaos far behind, the ocean reclaimed its familiar, terrible silence. And I was just... alone. With my thoughts, with the shadows of the last dive swirling about me like vengeful ghosts. Then, with a jolt, the pod leveled out. Seabed. I peered out the dome, my gut knotting at the sight before me. It wasn't just one of those structures. It was an entire city. Dozens of the towering organic domes glowed with an eerie, shifting light, linked by what looked like arteries cut into the ocean floor. And it was teeming with monstrous shapes. Hundreds of those serpentine creatures in constant motion. This wasn't a hunting ground. It was a breeding ground. A staging point. I felt a jolt of grim satisfaction. Stone's intel guys had found the heart of the beast. Now we just had to cut it out. Hell of a view, ain't it, Archer? Stone's voice cracked over the comms unit, breaking the tense silence. Never imagined we'd be the ones invading, I muttered back. The irony. Humans pushing deeper into the unknown, armed to the teeth against creatures perfectly adapted to this world. We were the aliens now. Orders, Captain. I choked down the rising nausea. We had a game plan. Rehashed until it was instinct. Scout as close as possible, identify weak points, then get the hell out. But there was one big variable, me. How would I act when confronted with that monstrous presence again, under the weight of its attention? It felt like only yesterday that I was floundering prey in its clutches. Standard recon protocols, Archer, Stone replied, his voice clipped with tension. Except there's one add-on. I need you to lure their hunters back on surface, if possible. I got a squad prepped and in position for an ambush, but we need that distraction to draw them out of their hole. My mouth went dry. Live bait. Of course, it took three deep breaths before I could force out a reply. And if their attention decides to stick to the little guy? Silence on the comms. It wasn't even radio distortion. Stone was picking his words carefully. He'd thrown hard choices my way before, but this was different. This time, there wasn't the illusion of an alternative. He'd basically painted a target on my back. Then get creative, Archer, he finally said. Don't underestimate that head of yours or their curiosity. You made them deviate from the hunt once. There's our advantage, slim as it might be. Use it. Now, move out. I closed my eyes for a moment, gripping the joystick until my knuckles turned white. I'd spent my whole life clawing my way into this world, fighting an outsider's fight against men like Stone, who'd always had gills to their names. I wanted to prove them wrong, to be a damn hero. It's what every idiot does to themselves, tell themselves stories to hide from the ugly truth. I was nothing special, no ace diver, no crack shot just a scared landlubber thrust into a fight he never asked for. My fingers closed around the joystick. Fine, let them make a monster out of me. If there was one thing those creatures in the deep taught me, it was how to become something truly frightening. I'd take them on, but on my terms this time. I eased the pod forward, gliding just meters above the seabed. The bioluminescent light played tricks on the eye, the organic structures appearing to shift and sway, not solid architecture, but undulating nightmares frozen in time. Each time I blinked, I couldn't shake the feeling they'd somehow moved closer. Through it all, my gaze searched for openings, vulnerabilities and patterns, anything that could be turned into a weapon. Even as a part of me shuddered in horror at the sheer scale of the alien city, another part was gripped by a cold, relentless focus. There was a terrifying clarity here, beneath the waves, far from the distractions and petty politics of the surface world. It was survival, primal and raw, and strangely liberating. Then I caught it, a pattern. The serpentine giants seemed to congregate along the structure's lower levels, weaving in and out of those monstrous apertures. But directly above, the domes were smoother, lined only with smaller nodules of light. Like eyes, but if so, where was the brain? I had a target. 
My hands reached for the controls, maneuvering the pod into a vertical ascent. It felt like ages, my pulse a pounding rhythm in my ears as I slowly pulled alongside one of the towering domes. Then, with a silent curse, I hitched the grapple to the slick surface. What the hell are you doing? Stone's voice boomed through the speakers, jarring me. Redefining recon, I muttered back. It was risky. Insane, maybe. But the recon drones we'd deployed just didn't have the processing power to pick out those minute details hidden behind their bioluminescence. With their attention directed below, this was my chance. My fingers worked frantically over the controls as I activated the scanner suite that usually went untouched in combat. Electromagnetic fields shifted across the display, mapping the complex webbing of energy coursing beneath the dome's surface. It was a gamble, betting that there was one concentrated hub, a central nervous system to their damned hive. A strike there, if I found it, might cause more than just a localized distraction. Every inch of ascent, every jolt as the grapple tethered me to that slimy, organic surface made my stomach churn. I expected monstrous shadows to burst out any moment, summoned by the intrusion, but it seemed my audacity had caught them off guard. For now, I was just a curious insect against their hive wall. Then the scan results locked onto something, a dense node nestled towards the center of the dome. It pulsed with intense energy and a web of lines radiated out, connecting it to every other structure in sight. The brain. Or close enough. It took two hands and a shaky curse to prime the sonic rifle. Archer, report! You seeing what I'm seeing? The astonishment in Stone's voice wasn't reassuring. I was seeing everything the Corps couldn't from up on their platform, all on a hunch and a prayer. I'd put one hell of a bet down with my life as the stake. I took a deep breath, bracing myself. Every survival instinct screamed at me to flee, to cut myself loose before whatever guarded this place finally took notice. But Stone needed a distraction. Hell, everyone out there needed a damn miracle. It was time to pay my dues to the underwater world that tried to kill me. Maybe there was some twisted justice in making the thing that hunted me become the hunted. I aimed the sonic rifle at the energy node and squeezed. The sonic blast roared into the water, sending ripples of distortion throughout my pod's dome. The rifle's recoil slammed into my wounded shoulder, pain exploding through my arm. But what erupted from the dome was beautiful in a terrible way. The surface crackled with searing light as the energy web buckled in on itself, agonizing overloaded shrieks that echoed even through my comms unit. Below, the city erupted into chaos. Hundreds of serpentine shapes whipped around, drawn to the source of the blast. It took just seconds for several massive forms to start writhing up the wall of the dome, zeroing in on my position. I swore and grabbed the grapple controls. Hit confirmed, Captain! I shouted, already hauling myself hand over the hand up the tethering cable. Hunters heading this way. Copy that, Archer. Brace yourself. Stone growled back, the static punctuated by distant booms. They'd seen their opening. It was carnage, but controlled carnage. Every muscle in my body screamed in protest as I yanked myself the last few feet into the pod. I barely registered severing the cable with a blast from the sidearm before hammering down on the thrust controls. My escape trajectory threw me out from the city dome at a suicidal angle. The sonic boom of a hunter slamming into the space I'd been seconds before sent the pod lurching violently. Through the dome, I watched the creatures twist in confusion. Below, the ocean floor had lit up where the ambush team waited. Then came an explosion brighter than anything those horrors could have ever generated. Human weaponry blasting an underwater crater into the landscape. One, maybe two hunters, went down alongside whatever Aquacorp Hellfire Stone had thrown at them. But just as my heart leapt in triumph, something massive struck the underside of my pod. I was thrown against the controls, pain flashing neon bright. When my vision cleared, a monstrous face filled the forward viewing dome. Jaws wide, 
teeth like bone spikes. It scraped them against the heavy glass, eyes blazing with the cold fury I'd only seen in glimpses before. This wasn't random attack, it was targeted. One of the creatures that had gone for me the first time, and despite the chaos, it tracked me like a bloodhound. Frantically, I reached for the pod's auxiliary defences, a flare to blind it, maybe a burst from the mini torpedo bay. It wouldn't kill the brute, but it might confuse it long enough for a getaway. Except, there was an eerie stillness behind those neon eyes. They weren't looking to tear me limb from limb anymore. Instead, there was a hint of that primal intelligence, that calculated assessment. I had its full attention. Then as suddenly as it had grabbed hold, it swiveled with unnerving agility and surged back towards the chaos swirling below. I had only moments before it rejoined the battle, but those moments felt like hours, strung out in a taut wire of icy adrenaline. Had I done it? Had I managed to draw them towards Stone's team, turning those merciless underwater depths into a two-sided battlefield? It was the biggest damn gamble of my life. Archer! Status! Stone's voice blared across the comms again, cutting through the daze. With a shaking hand, I flipped on the long-range scanner. Heat signatures lit up the display like embers of hell against the backdrop of the alien city. And in that shifting chaos... It was impossible to tell who was winning, or even where the lines had been drawn. But at least it wasn't the one-sided massacre it had been. Humanity wasn't just surviving in the depths anymore. We were fighting back. Captain, I said, my voice strangely level as I gripped the joystick. Think it's time I paid my way down there. I descended towards the seabed with a strange mix of dread and grim exhilaration. Below me, the once pristine seafloor was scarred with craters and billowing clouds of debris. Bioluminescent blood painted the waters with eerie neon streaks, mingling with the blinking lights of Aquacorf combat subs and the swirling debris of shattered alien structures. Despite the destructive spectacle, it was oddly beautiful, a twisted testament to the deadly fight for survival. Suddenly, a deep, rumbling tremor tore through the water. One of the colossal alien domes, weakened by the battle, imploded in a cascade of blinding light. I squinted against the flash, feeling my pod get tossed about violently. This wasn't a fight the fragile ecosystem could withstand much longer, but something within that scene of destruction filled me not with despair, but a defiant thrill. The ocean no longer belonged solely to the creatures from the abyss, we were bloodying them. They weren't invincible gods of the depths anymore. The fear was still there, coiling in my gut. But now it was shot through with the fire of retribution. They'd underestimated us. And that was going to be their downfall. Stone targets neutralized. Looks like their central comm unit just gave out, I reported, even as another tremor nearly knocked me off balance. I'm seeing structural collapses all over their damn city. You want me to stick around for... Clean up? There was a pause, then his laugh crackled over the comms. Loud, genuine, echoing with both disbelief and relief. Archer, son, do you even hear yourself? No, son, we don't do clean up, not today. Today's a goddamn win. Get your ass back to the surface. We'll mop up what's left of this mess. My hand hovered over the ascent controls. Even now, my instinct was to dive deeper, search for more to unravel, more ways to turn the tide further. But Stone was right. The creatures hadn't just lost territory. Their infrastructure, their communication, whatever hive mind drove them, had received a crippling blow. They might still outnumber us, but for the first time since they'd revealed themselves, they were the ones scrambling on the back foot. Today, survival wasn't enough. It was about victory. As I broke through the surface, a cheer roared from the platform crew. The sight of those exhausted, seawater-slick faces ignited a strange warmth within me. These weren't the Aquacore elite I'd been desperate to impress. They were techs, engineers, medics, the ones usually unseen, 
who patched fighters like me back together with little fanfare. These people, with their webbed hands and gills, looked at me, a landlubber on their waterlogged turf, and saw not an outsider, but a comrade. Stone was the last to haul me out, his hand heavy on my shoulder. His usual stern-faced reserve was finally gone, etched over with a mix of exhaustion and quiet satisfaction. So, kid, think you got a taste for this abyss of yours? He asked, a crooked grin cracking through his gruffness. Monstrous shapes shifted through my mind beneath the waves, the lingering ache of my wounds, the unsettling fascination mingled with an icy terror I could never fully shed. It was an impossible world, an endless fight for survival against the primal darkness. But then I also saw the look of quiet hope, of kinship, on those faces surrounding me. It was a world worth fighting for, my world now. A grin twisted my lips, meeting stone gaze head on. Funny you should ask, I said, the rumble of a full-size submersible cutting across my words. It was an entirely new class of deep-sea juggernaut, heavier armor, stronger weapons, clearly born in the desperation of the past weeks. And they were naming it Archerfish. I swallowed, pride warring with an unnerving anticipation of what it implied. Actually, Captain, I'm just getting started. With those words, I knew the game wasn't just about beating the creatures of the deep. It was my next fight, to forge a place for myself within the strange, brave new world humanity was desperately carving out. In that murky underwater domain, I could be not just an outsider clinging to survival, but an architect of the future. It was just as terrifying and twice as thrilling. For better or worse, I'd made the abyss my battlefield, my playground, my home. Weeks bled into months. The battle in the abyss morphed into a grueling campaign of attrition. Humanity dug in, clinging to the hard-won gains, setting up fortified structures and research facilities on the ocean floor. Those colossal biodomes, once monstrous relics of alien life, now served as laboratories where marine biologists tirelessly dissected their technology and searched for a key to their long-term defeat. And leading the way were archerfish squads, the new class of deep-water hunters named after yours truly. I still chuckled at that. Landlubber turned poster boy for undersea warfare. Life's irony could always surprise you. I hadn't seen the light of day since that first victorious battle. Between recovery from my various near-death experiences and immediate redeployment, there was no home anymore, just snatches of sleep between deployments on the Archerfish Mark I. This underwater beast was both my sanctuary and my prison. With it, I wasn't just a survivor, I was a weapon. Today was no different. My squadmate, Kai, a seasoned aquacore diver with gills from birth, snapped me back to the present. Incoming scanping! He barked, his voice distorted by the comm filters. Looks like something big just broke the surface, bearing north. Not more cleanup duty, I muttered, then shook my head in annoyance. No, the brass wasn't stupid enough to waste the archerfish on mopping up minor incursions anymore. When we rolled out, it was because something serious was stirring in the vast unknown. A tremor coursed through my craft and something blinked on the long-range sonar. Not just big, but massive. Like an underwater iceberg shifting out of hibernation and moving fast. We'd had scouts reporting unusual currents in this sector, an undersea upheaval building for weeks. Now it looked like we'd found the cause. Stone, I cut into the command channel. We've got eyes on the anomaly. You're going to tell us what the hell we're chasing. Static buzzed back, followed by Stone's familiar gruff voice. This time, though... There was an unfamiliar tension in it. Son, this ain't a damn chase. This, this is what they've been building toward all along. A cold knot formed in my stomach. All our localized victories, all the territory recovered. It had simply masked the enemy's larger play. It felt like facing off against a boxer and scoring a lucky shot. You celebrate the moment only to realize it was just a feint leading into the real knockout blow. On my console, readings spiked into the red. 
hydrophone pings mapped out a vast, shadowy form. Then, in a single terrifying jolt, a flash lit up the waters directly ahead of us. Not one structure, not even a dozen. Hundreds. An armada of living fortresses crawling forth from the ocean depths. Kai, I said, my voice strangely calm amidst the blaring proximity alerts. Get ready to rewrite the definition of what big means. They'd fooled us. The war hadn't even begun yet. This right here, right now, this was the opening salvo. As the first monstrous shadow surged forth, a new wave of determination flooded me. We might be outgunned, outmatched, out-evolved to navigate this undersea nightmare. But this was about more than winning now. We weren't just protecting our little sliver of space under the waves. We were fighting for the right to even have a future here, at any depth. I grinned, fingers itching to hit the torpedo controls. It was time they remembered who really owned the title of Apex Predator. Time to paint those neon lights crimson red. Humanity could learn to thrive here. We could make this place ours. Maybe it wasn't so crazy after all, that first spark of belonging back on the platform. There was no going back. Not until we shoved these creatures so far back into their holes that they'd leave us in peace. And hell, if I was being really brutally honest, a part of me craved seeing exactly how far we could push the boundaries of this terrifying new world. Because the abyss, it had sunk its teeth into me too. I'd made my choice a long time ago, back when I dove towards that nest of nightmares. Not the choice of a hero, but a damned stubborn fool fighting for a breath of air. Turns out, sometimes a fool is exactly what's needed to change the world. Or maybe just break it. Either way, the ride was getting wilder by the minute. Fire at will, I said, and we plunged into the darkness, 